Okay, so in the last videos we set up a bunch of connections with areas and made sure that um, this scene had its own distinct tables uh, so that it could exist in the same project as farming. Um, something else that we should actually make sure is also distinct is the inventory IDs because otherwise in the database because otherwise inventory will actually be shared between this and farming. But I don't think I'm going to worry about that one because I don't plan on leaving farming in existence in this project. Um, but just adds up, if you do plan to, to have two distinct scenes with um, where there's the inventory isn't shared between the two scenes, um, like the, the items in the database and stuff, uh, you are going to want to give them different uh, inventory IDs in that case in this um, this table. Oops, uh, wrong one. Uh, this table here. Okay, but um, we're not going to worry about that for what we're doing right now. Instead, what I think I'm going to do is swap over to the art scene because one of the cool things about uh, tables is that you don't they're in your project content, so you can access them from anywhere. So that means that I can actually work in my art scene and think about things in in the way that I generally do when I'm setting up art, but also have access to the table to start filling out data. Um, I think we'll, we'll start with a currency, um, and we'll just sort of go from there. So these... Um, are going to be my currencies in the game. Let me get the table for this. So if I go to my tables, I can go to coral tables and there should be a currencies one. Yeah. Okay. So there's just a coins currency right now. That's what um, was duplicated over from farming. So we're going to call these, I'm going to call it experience. I have a really hard time spelling, so I'm going to go back and forth on so much naming here. I'll call it experience for now. I might rename it to stars later. I don't, I'm not I'm not sure <laughs> to think about this. Um, insert row below. I, I don't know if I've really talked about it. I've been designing this game for a long time, but that doesn't mean that all of the design is fully thought out. Um, that I'm going to have lower points of some kind. I haven't even decided exactly how I'm using all of these currencies. Um, and then we're going to have the money for the game, which is going to be pearls. Uh, it doesn't look like I need a storage key unless I want to specify a different one. This is for the starting amount, so experience, we don't want you to start with any. Um, lower, you won't start with any. Pearls, we'll start you with like 10,000 right now. When we publish the game, we're not going to want that number, but... Um, when I start putting in purchasables, it's nice to have money to practice with. Um, I won't set any max values yet, although I, I probably will put in one just to keep the UI from getting crazy if someone goes above it. So I'll probably just put in a cap. Uh, I have no idea what verbose launch means, but there's a checkbox in it, so we'll do that for now. Uh, okay, so here is the drop templates and the drop item pickup templates. Okay, so that's going to be something we need for setting. Um, those are spots where we want to set up art. So templates, version, I probably put them in other. So the drop item pickup template, that's actually a functional template, but this is the art template. So um, so you, here's a currency pearl drop, currency pearl icon. Let's so the drop for pearls thingy, and then the floor. Ooh, looks like I didn't actually make the drop for that one yet. Uh, it's we'll worry about the actual position and um, scale of these later, but for now. Oh, I remember, well, yeah, okay. I might actually make these drops look different later, but 
Uh, oh, I should have de-instanced that. So there's our lower drop, and then our star experience drop. Now item pickup distance, we're going to want that exact same one. I could have actually just hit this. And the icon asset. So for the icon asset um, that, that was previously, like in farming, that, that was a 2D um, just core icon, but that's not what we're doing. So let's go get our currency temp things here. Instead, I've made 3D icons for them. So we want our lower icon and we want our pearl icon and um, our star experience icon. And like I said, I'll, I'll show you later how to adjust the look of all these to be appropriate to their use case. But for now, it just needs to be a template with that art in it. That's good enough to get things going. Um, these are not image icons. These are 3D icons. If, if I had a kit bash to 2D icon and then made a template of that, then I would check this box. But um, what uh, we're using a 3D icon, so that's it. So those currencies are set up enough for now. I'm sure we will come back and change many things, but this is this is good for all. So we'll hit save all, and we'll close the currencies for now. Um, one of the other things we'll have to do, but we'll have to do it in the other scene, is set up a display, like so that we have a UI element for each of those currencies. So they all show, because right now only the first one I entered on that table. Actually, that one won't even show, because the, the display is probably set to coins. So we'll have to we'll have to change that, but we'll do that when we get here. Um, the items in this um, scene here are divided into a couple categories of things. These ones here uh, in the front are meant to be set pieces that don't actually do anything. They're not functional. They're something you can find. These little ruins and stuff are also just functional places, but they're where I plan on hiding little lore items. Um, and then the stuff at the back here, this, this row, these are actual gatherables. So you can see the rocks have a, a full state and then a partially harvested and then a very harvested um, state. And there's also some seaweeds, which are just single harvest for now, and some wood, which are single harvest. And I made these different little lore things, which um, are, are what you're actually going to find in the world to get the, the lore points. I just didn't want to use the same art over and over. I thought it'd be more fun if they looked like different icons. Yeah, so we're going to set up probably the gatherables next, because they're, they're the next... Um, they're not very complicated, so they're a good starting point in, into this whole thing. Now, I've already built these into templates and named them. There's nothing special about these templates. It's, they all, they do need a consistent um, pivot point, which should be the bottom center of them. So that's like the origin of the group where this tool lines up. Um, and you want that to be done so that as the rock breaks away, it doesn't look like it's jumping all over the place, right? It should be in a place that's sensible for that asset. But, other than that, there's there's really nothing special about these. They're not, you know, they don't, they're just artwork. But where we use them is actually in the gatherable states table. So that's gatherable states coral. Now in naming these, um, sometimes I find if you name things too descriptively, you become trapped in the idea of it. So if I, you know, called something red pillar, then later it's harder for my brain to understand that actually I should have made the pillar orange. It would look much nicer because I've called it a red pillar. So when I'm, if I, if I feel I'm at risk of that because I'm in a really early stages of design in something, then I give things very generic names. So my gatherables here, I've just called them gatherable rock A, rock B, rock C, because I don't have a, a meaning into my head what any of those mean. And we're, we have an opportunity um, in the uh, tables, like in our database, to give these things a name. So so don't worry about the this file name, just 
call it something that that you can consistently find it under but don't stress about it you can change you can change it later if you need to we're going to get rid of just most of the things in here i don't i don't need so many examples you know for me to understand how to fill this out so okay so we deleted a whole bunch of them um and now we're going to just start naming things. So this is going to be a little bit tricky. Normally I would use two monitors for this, but um, I want to be able to show you everything I'm doing in the recording. So we're just going to call it rock A as the ID. That's an, that'll be enough rocks for now, or enough gatherables for us to do our initial tests. So the next thing we need to do is is put in the states for them. So the the first state is what the player will see when um, they first encounter the rock before they've started bashing it into pieces. So we've got state one for our rock. Then we have state two for the rock. We have state three, and we'll just do this for each rock. Okay, so that's just the artwork. Um, we don't need a gathered state for for these because they completely vanish when you harvest them. If part of them remained behind, then you would put that uh, art into the gathered state, but uh, these don't need that. So. File save all. So that's what we got for the gathered uh, state table. But next we need next we need the actual gatherables table. And while we're at it, we're just going to open the gatherable group table as well. We've got the gatherables. So this one here, we're going to need to give it. We'll need four rows for now, so we can delete these extra ones. And these need to have the same IDs as these here. So rock A, B, C, and D. Now, here's our opportunity to, oops, if we, if, if we wanted to give these names that are more meaningful or more descriptive of what the player's actually looking at, this is a name that the player can see in some cases. I'm just gonna call these all rock. Um, maybe I'll make more colorful names for them later. But for now, uh, we don't need to do that. Now, for a valid tool type, the tool that I intend to use on this is probably going to be this hammer. Um, and, and there is a hammer already hooked up in our database right now. Um, so I can, I can probably reuse that one. Let's just, I'll just show you that. Oops, can't get it there. Keep looking in the hierarchy, but that's not where I can get it right now. Let's go to... If we open the um, this table, you can see all the items that were existing in farming that we've now duplicated. But there are some tools in here, and one of them's a hammer. So for now, it's probably wise of me just to use that, that hammer just so that I can I can just swap the art out on it, then I don't need to, to rebuild everything. And we were using, in farming, the hammer tools also used to like remove things, to pick them up, like furniture and stuff, and I'll probably make that the case in, in this game as well. So here, let's just say hammer. And these are all um, an, an error message if you try to use the wrong tool. So we'll say use a hammer to break rock. Then the gather effects, we probably don't want um, the current gather effect uh, for stone is okay, it's fine, but we're probably going to want our own copy of it because if we put it over next to next to our existing stone, also at some point we're probably going to want to change the speed and look of the explosion because it it doesn't look like it's underwater and our thing is going to be underwater but if we um, come and play this effect you see the 
color is not a match. So we'd have to, we need to make a new version of this. Um, so we're going to de-instance this and we're going to abandon template. We're going to see what I've done for color on here. Yeah, it's just a really bright override. So we'll just copy that. Go back to our effect. We'll try pasting that in. So it's too pale because that's not actually a stone material on there. So if we just try dialing this back, yeah, we'll get something closer. A little, little darker, maybe even. It's good enough for now. We can fiddle with that later. And like I said, we'll, we can change the sound effect later and the speed of the explosion and stuff to look more suited to gathering underwater. If I'm worried about stuff getting confused, like a material or effects between this and other projects, I often append some repetitive element to all my names. So Seacraft is what I've chosen to be the one for this project. CC was confusing, right? That's what I probably would have used as the initials, but since CC is a thing in core, I didn't want to confuse myself, so I called it Seacraft. And let's make a new template. So we can delete this now, because we just need to be able to reference it. Uh, spawn template on load, respawn seconds, that's all fine for now. These are going to need their own drop ID, but we can kind of steal an existing one right now, because I think there's here, there's one called stone small. So we'll, we'll just use that one for now, because um, we can repurpose that one. Leave all these settings. Draw behavior ID references another table, and, and this setting basically means that the thing drops for everybody. I like to make games that are very communal in nature, so most of my drops are set to that unless we completely unbalance the game. Um, now the gatherable state ID, that's what we that's looking for the artwork. So that was the first table we filled out. So we can we can just copy these um, over to that. So we've now set up quite a bit of gatherable stuff, but I'm going to stop this video here just because it's getting pretty long. But um, in the next video, I will show you how to set up a gatherable group. We'll make sure that it's dropping the actual stone item that we want to use. So we'll add our, our new item and then correct its drop to be what we want to see. And then we'll set up the gatherable group and put it in the quarry. We'll try to get all that in one video. All right, see you in the next one.